Shalom, today is January 25th. It is 111 days of the war in Israel. Let's take a look to what Israelis are reading today in the newspaper. It reads, the chief of staff is freezing the committees of examination um, for examining the failures of October 7th. The failures of October 7th on the Israeli side that allowed this brutal, murderous, and wild attack uh, while it took for so many hours um, for the IDF to respond sufficiently. Barbie. The tragedy of the Barbie force. Barbie is the name of the commander many times in the IDF. The forces are named by the commander's name. It's, an, it's his nickname, obviously. Um, but five of this closely knitted team that was enlisted together many years ago and, res and served in reserve duty uh, this war, five of them died and the tragedy a couple days ago where 21 soldiers died. So that's a big loss for this force. So the front page, the, front, the first article uh, reads, Israel is at war after the storm. It says the chief of staff is freezing the committees of examination. And he, the chief of staff says, his name is Herzi Alevi, he says, the IDF is all for examination and investigation, and we'll do it in the right time. Right now, there are internal committees that are taking place. They can continue, but having it turned to an external committee by the government is wrong at this point because the commanders of the IDF need to be fully focused on the war. Here's the photograph of Herzi Halevi, the chief of staff. So much weight is on, on his shoulders. The next article is all about the disaster of the 21. In Hebrew, it reads, Ason ha the disaster of the 21 soldiers that died a few days ago altogether um, in buildings that collapsed on them from explosives that they themselves put in to destroy these two buildings. This whole article is about um, different angles about this disaster. So here's a testimony from one of the reserve soldiers that was serving in the area of the disaster. And he says he's giving his opinion about what could have been done differently uh, to prevent such a big disaster. Um, but it's important to say the operation that the soldiers were doing, they were doing this many times, dozens and hundreds of times, um, to destroy homes for the safety of Israel, uh, right to create a barrier zone between Israel and Gaza. The next down here um, reads Tsevet Echad, one team, Chamesh Levayot, five funerals. And this um, is referring to the picture in the front of the page. It re this, is a this is a team that began together when they were 18, uh, but five of them, five of them were lost in this disaster. And really in the Israeli military, the teams are very, very close and knitted together closely. It's like family. They go through so much together. Um, so it's a big, big loss having five of your team lost. And they're saying that um, there's much pain, much sadness, but we are determined to continue strong together with who remained. And here we see a picture, uh, photographs of a few of the funerals. So many funerals were in the couple of, last couple of days. Nifradim Bekeev, separating in pain. Next is about the Iranian connection with South Africa and the prosecution in Hague. And it reads that the Beit Mishpat, the International Court of Justice in the Hague, will publish tomorrow the decision regarding the interim order um, in, the, in the accusation that Israel is create, committing a genocide in Gaza. After years that Iran has been spreading out her, oct her long octopus hands to the borders of Israel, the circumstances raise a concern or a suspicion that also this uh, prose prosecution of South Africa, it's actually birthed and originated in Tehran in Iran. And here we see Sevet Hatvia, the uh, prosecution team of South Africa. Uh, so we'll have to wait to tomorrow to see what does the Hague decide. Next about the hostages, it reads Tmunot Minatofit, photos from the um, horror. Tofit is a strong word of you know, just terribleness, horror. No one can imagine what it is to be in a tunnel. The body falls apart, the, the soul falls apart. And this is a quote from Daniel Aloni. Uh, here's her daughter as well, um, that was in captivity uh, for 49 days until she was released. These, this is a photo actually of uh, the day of the release. And it reads, Daniel Aloni, that was released with her daughter Amelia from the Hamas captivity. She was held in a tunnel that was 
um, uh, exposed by the IDF. And she says there was a there was a uh, hard problem there of air. There was no water, and it was terrible claustrophobic feeling. And she continues, the situation, when, the situation was very bad already on the 49th day. She's warning, what, does it, what happens today then on the 111th day? Every day that passes is another potential for another uh, corpse, another body. And here is the picture of what we actually we showed a couple days ago in another um, newspaper report of uh, with the artificial grass. So it looks like a standard size cell, but actually it reads 16 people were crammed together in two meters and uh, two meters uh, square place in the tunnel. And here's just a peek uh, to what's happening in Israel as, as the war in Israel is going on. We are preparing for the Holocaust Memorial Day, same spirit, right, of October 7th and the Holocaust. Um, so Israel is remembering the Holocaust like in every year. Um, here's an advertisement for an art exhibition that will be opening up tomorrow in Yad Vashem, the official memorial center um, of the Holocaust. And we see here the three generations in an art piece, and um, more will be displayed starting tomorrow. And now to the last article of today's newspaper, Yesh Chaim B'Sderot, there is life in Sderot. Sderot is the largest city close to the uh, border, and um, the article is sharing that 30,000 Sderot residents were evacuated from the beginning of the war. Now only 2,000 of the residents have stayed in the city that is still recuperating from the hard hit that it got from October 7th, on October 7th. One of the residents returning to the city is Chaim Oliel, a musician in Israel, and he says, we're confused like the country is confused. Now Sderot is sad, dark, and empty, but the people are coming back bit by bit, each time a little bit more. Here's Chaim Oliel walking on Sterot streets. Here's the market of Sterot completely empty. But it reads, Lamrot Akol, despite everything, there is falafel, a little falafel stand that's keeping, going, keeping on going. For more updates and stories, go to allisrael.com and follow us on our social media. Like this video if you liked it, and it is January 25th. It's my father's birthday, so happy birthday, Dad, Howard Bass. This is Rotem again for All Israel News.